Good morning or a good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending where you guys are at in the country. Looks like we got some part more participants trickling in. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time out of your busy schedules today to attend our, our first ever NODES webinar. Um, I'll be one of the panelists. My name is Om Kongtang. I'm uh, the Sales and Contract Ops Sales Manager. Uh, we will have Christina Bentley, who is our CFO, also on the panel. And uh, all, obviously, Chris Wilkinson, the president of NODES, will be the gentleman presenting today on NODES. Um, today's purpose is we'll be discussing the benefits and the values of the NODES technology. Um, during this presentation, I want you guys to feel free to do any Q&A. Um, the panelists will be behind the scenes doing the questions and answers. So at any time, please feel free to field any questions that you guys may have, and we'll do the best we can to answer those questions uh, via Q&A. And at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll take some of the questions that uh, came up from the audience and Chris will be more than happy to answer them. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys, the presidents of NODES, Chris Wilkinson, and thank you for attending today's webinar. Thank you, Om. Welcome everybody. This is our uh, first ever NODES webinar on potable water main cleaning technology. And I also put in this uh, cover page that we're introducing it towards the end, our new potable water main jetting video location and leak detection technology. And the reason why we're bringing that up is we're only gonna spend a little bit of time on that. We have another uh, webinar in November, but I just wanted to bring that up. NODES is now your one-stop shop for water distribution maintenance needs and we're gonna cover that. Um, just so everybody knows, neutral output discharge elimination system is what the NODES uh, referenced, leading by example in water conservation. I'm just gonna jump right into it and let everybody see exactly where we're going. So current flushing methods available. We have, a dish, uh, we have conventional flushing, unidirectional flushing, NODES flushing is what mostly we're gonna talk about, and pigging, ice with foam, our scouring, things like that is uh, we might cover a little bit of that. But the most important thing is and or stop flushing. Um, most municipalities have decided to stop flushing because the lack of supply, cost of the water supply, so on and so forth. So stop flushing is, is actually what's, what's happening now. So I just keep this uh, flushing video so everybody can see what flushing actually is. It's gonna repeat itself for a minute. So I'll, uh, I'll talk about a little bit about you. The utilities must provide safe drinking water at the lowest possible cost. And as environmental stewards, the message we send our customers must be clear and concise. We'll never have enough water to waste. So what is, water distribution system flushing. It's just a process that cleans the inside of the water mains by creating high flows. Most utilities flush as often as possible, sometimes four months uh, per year or more, achieved by opening fire hydrants, blow offs or flushers. We've had some of our customers flush up to two weeks at a time, nonstop, 24 hours a day. Um, having said that, anytime like on the picture you see in front of you, um, four and a half inch hydrant port, it is going um, 22,500 gallons per every 15 minutes. That's a lot of water to waste. So why is flushing needed if it wastes all this water? Clean, we gotta clean the water mains. We gotta remove biofilm, we gotta improve water quality. We gotta eliminate free ammonia and chlorinated systems, eliminate the nitrification problems, improve residuals. Drought and limited or increasingly costly supplies make it so difficult to flush. So flushing programs are put on hold often for years. So the result, I gotta click it twice, is this. You get a buildup of dirty, dirty water that's gonna be coming out of your main. And this is what your customers uh, possibly get from time to time also. So, so the result, oh, I was looking at that. So the result is this. We, we don't wanna have that gun come to the customer. So we'll talk a little bit about conventional and unidirectional type flushing. You have program and reactionary. If you cut the program, you increase your reactionary. And, and that's just what that muddy looking water is. Conventional flushing, open of hydrants and distribution systems can take hours for some hydrants to clear. 
and it's not really cleaning the main, it's just dumping the water. Valve isolation can be used, uh, can be done with one or two people, perhaps more dependent on the NPDES issues from the Clean Water Act and the state. Conventional flushing can cause water quality problems in the system, discolored water, low pressures, spread of biofilms, loss of customer confidence when they see the discolored water coming out like that. Velocity is lower if the valve isolation is used and it may not remove all the sediment, corrosion, buildup, and biofilm, etc. So now we're going to take a look at a standard grid map and uh, my cursor will point out where we're at. This is the hydrant um, uh, located that we're going to be flushing right here. If you just open the hydrant like you saw in the video, you're pulling water from several different directions. So if this is what rec uh, AWWA recommends, three to five feet per second, by drawing it from these several different directions, you're only gonna get maybe one to 1 1.3 feet per second. You're just dumping dirty water, which is okay, but it's very costly. And that's what this is all about right there. So now is, um, what makes the, uh, what conservation measures are taken by the water utilities? It's education, you know, to change uh, the habits, uh, restriction on use, odd even days, hours, inclining block rates, fines for the waste, mandatory rationing, rebates, toilets, washing machines, shower heads, artificial lawns, water audits. So what is the common denominator here? The focus is always on the customer. And so now there's a better solution. We have NODES, Neutral Output Discharge Elimination System. So I'm gonna quickly go through how NODES actually works in comparison to just opening the fire hydrant like you, you saw before. So our first slide here um, just shows that we're hooked up to this hydrant on the right-hand side and connected to the inlet of the pump on the truck goes through the filters, and then these hoses are connected to the hydrant on the left-hand side. So now we're gonna see what's in the street. So in the street is if you look, the flow, general flow of water is going from the right of your screen over to the left-hand side of your screen. So that's just the flow that everybody's getting served with. And we use these little bubbles just so you could actually see it. The dirt, or uh, buildup of my, uh, biofilm and my, uh, magnesi magnesium and um, iron, things like that is represented by the red. So everything's flowing. We have the hydrants open, the hoses are, gen uh, are energized, everything's pressurized, we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is turn the NODES system on. So when we turn it on, the water's being pumped through the truck and it comes over to this hydrant, goes down into the main, back through here, scouring the main, back up to the hydrant and over. It's not affecting anything to the right of this uh, screen and anything on the left-hand side of the screen, only between the two hydrants at the main. So having said that, the water that was, that was originally going down the main and going to serve the customers down here cannot flow through the pipe with five feet per second charging up the main here. So that water has to go through our process, through the one micron absolute filters, and then back on, back out, and you can see that small amount of water that was being used continues on while the bulk of the water scours the inside of the main and starts picking up the dirt. So now you can see it's starting to pick up the dirt. After about 15 minutes, now the water main is clear between here and here. The main is clean, the water has been in, uh, water quality has been improved, and you can see it's still flushing. We're still got the same flow rate, the water still continue on. The customer never saw any pressure drops, dirty water or anything. It's, it, everything's normal. So now we're just gonna turn it off. So now it's turned off. We're back to where we started with when we first set up, but you can see that the main between here and here is clean. From the left to right is clean. So now we wanna stay here. We're gonna leave the par truck parked here. We're gonna leave the hoses hooked up. Now we're gonna zoom out. Now this shows our truck exactly where it was before, but now we've isolated this piece of main right here by shutting this valve off about 98%, not all the way down. And now we turn on the flushing uh, notice truck and now it goes around the block. We did have to isolate a couple of valves, but nobody's out of water. 
we've just created a hydraulic loop to where our flushing flow goes exactly where we want it to go around the block. Once this gets done, 15, 20 minutes, then we can do the same. We stay here and we go around the block this way. And then we just do that over and over again. As you can see, it goes down to the south of our truck. And then we get that clean, it goes down. You can see the lighter blue representing that those mains are clean. We can clean anywhere from 1.5 miles to five miles a day by staying in one spot. If we do uh, cul-de-sacs or dead ends, um, it does uh, limit our amount that we can do. And it's usually around uh, three quarters of a mile to a mile a day. And it's a lot harder, it takes a lot more time but um, we get more production out of going uh, on these loops here. So now only no disc technology offers four important factors to ensure the biofilm has been removed. The first one's turbidity. So you can see on the turbidity meter here, it, it's got up to 7.39. Um, we, we actually have turbidity analyzers that analyze the water to ensure they get down below one MTU and thus we know exactly when it's clean, we know when to shut it off. Flow is another factor that um, conventional flushing doesn't offer. We have an exact flow. So we can look at this uh, placard up here and we know exactly when we're achieving either three or five feet per second, whoops. So flow is very important to make sure that we're getting those uh, velocities up high enough to scour and clean the inside of the main. Disinfectant residual. We can add disinfectant residual to where we can put the residual back in there with a very low concentration. And even if it's a chloraminated system, it adds to the remaining free ammonia and creates more of a chloraminated residual. And the most important here is time. And the reason why we say that is when you're conventionally flushing, um, you open the hydrant and you let it blow and you're losing 22,500 gallons per 15 minutes, you wanna get that done as fast as possible, get that uh, dirty water out, clean water to your customers, but you're wasting a lot. If we're hooked up and we see that the NTUs, the turbidity is still high, we can just leave it on. It just We just sit there for an extra 10 minutes or whatever until it gets clean, we get everything clean, then we shut it off. Therefore, the main gets clean, the customers get uh, quality clean water, and we don't have to come back as soon the next time. So I'm gonna switch this. So just as you're looking at this slide, notice flushing method and process saves between one and 6% of all water supplies. In some places, it can save a lot more. Um, out in um, Atlanta, Georgia, in that area, they're flushing six to eight times per year, their whole system. So um, it can save a lot of uh, flushing and we do it so much more efficiently that it lasts longer. So you're not gonna have to be flushing with NODES as much as they were flushing conventionally. Saves energy, the energy required to produce, treat, pressurize and deliver the water. It improves the water quality to a higher standard than it was before delivered cleans and scours the inside of the main more effectively than conventional flushing techniques. That includes ice picking, air, air scouring, and unidirectional type flushing. Increases the safety of the water by increasing the disinfection in the distribution system. Again, we can actually add um, free chlorine into the distribution system that is using chloramination. It recombines with the free ammonia and thus gives you back your chloraminated residual. Solves issues with chlor chloramines, rem removes biofilm, and eliminates nitrification. And the reason why this is so important is because the chloramines actually feed the um, uh, nitrification and, uh, I'm sorry, it feeds the biofilm and creates more nitrification. We remove that biofilm, thus eliminating the uh, nitrification. It refreshes the water, eliminating water age and dead ends. That's one of our, our big tools uh, that we can actually refresh the water, clean it up, and we don't have to dump it in the dead ends. Allows year round flushing. Even in a severe cold, we can flush. Some of the problems they do have is when they um, dump some of the water on the ground from the hoses is that could freeze and cause um, um, liability issues. But we can flush year round 24 seven. 
It eliminates NODES issues and fines. Oh, I'm sorry, NPDES issues and fines for your discharge permit. And that um, we uh, we never um, lose more than three, four hundred gallons per minute out of the hoses. So therefore, we don't have to um, deal with the NPDES um, regulations. Reduces water quality complaints from the customers. That's big in Hillsborough, uh, California. They were getting 10 to 15 water quality complaints from dirty water each conventional flush. 10 years ago, they started using the uh, NODES system and they haven't had one water quality complaint from flushing since. Um, it is possible, but they haven't. So that's a knock on the wood there. Eliminates pressure loss and surging. There's no water hammering. There's no reducing. Uh, it, it does reduce main breaks and, and damages. There's, there's no surging and um, no pressure increases. Eliminate, it eliminates water or property damage. So um, in a lot of our customers' areas, they don't have curbs and gutters. And just by flushing, the water can go down and ruin uh, flower beds, lawns, uh, driveways, things like that. Improves PR with your customers. You can lead by example in water conservation. They see you out there saving their water, improving their water quality, conserving the water. They like that. And we've seen that with every city we've been to. Notice flushing technology saves money. It pays for itself. If you're, um, if you're spending uh, approximately $3,000 per million gallons, your unit's going to pay for itself within two to three years easily. The only technology, uh, NODES is the only technology to offer four important factors to, to ensure that the biofilm has been removed. And we touched on this a little bit before. We move this onto there so you can see that. Number one is turbidity. We monitor turbidity and we only turn it off when it gets down below one, very, very uh, clean. The flow. The flow is, uh, and, and we talked about it a minute ago, the flow is very important to um, achieve those scouring flows, those uh, velocities. Disinfectant residual, we'll talk about that over and over again. We're the only ones that can put that in there safely. And then of course time, we can stay there on station as long as possible and make sure it gets done. So uh, back to the reservoir cleaning uh, and tank draining. Yes, let me go back to that. So <clears throat> it, as you see up here on the upper right hand corner, there's a diver inside your tank. We can actually hook to the bottom drain and take the uh, other uh, hose around to the front of the tank and plug it back in. Leave the tank open to the customer. The diver can get in there. And as we're um, sucking three to 500 gallons per minute out of the tank, he's either uh, doing inspections, repairs, clean up, and anything that he stirs up gets sucked right down to the bottom drain. It makes it very safe for the diver. We're adding chlorine for disinfection safety and the customer has no idea it's being done. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good tool once you have your NODES unit. Another application is cleaning new mains. If you're installing uh, new mains in a new subdivision, et cetera, when the uh, contractor puts a lot of debris inside there and they fill it up to superchlorinate and let it set, we can actually flush that with the superchlorinate, get all of the debris out of there so it doesn't cause a positive uh, sample let it cook, and then we can, uh, with ca uh, um, Captor, we can actually take the um, chlorine residual from superchlorinate up to 300 parts per million all the way down the system and not have to waste the water or put that into the environment. Fire main cleaning is we can go on to private industrial fire main systems and clean them without wasting the water, m much more efficiently than just them opening it up and wasting the water. GAC filter backwashing is a, a big staple of ours up in New Jersey. Um, American Water does 87 um, GAC filters with hazardous material in, embedded in the um, granulated activated carbon. We can backwash with our system, maintaining better backwash flows, and you don't have to dump the water. We can put it right back into the system. Then we just dewater the um, filter bags and we just throw them uh, to the hazardous waste site. So it's, it's uh, very efficient. Well rehabilitation is we can go into a well when they're uh, developing the well, we can hook up and all the stuff that is coming out of that new well, we can capture and dump to where the water goes back into the system with uh, chlorination and we can save a lot of water there. Fire flow testing, 
Um, we're working uh, right now with American Water Engineers to develop a fire flow testing um, uh, 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 process that will actually be accepted um, by all the cities in the United States and not have to waste the water like they do um, basically every day. Now we're going to talk about our unit. This is a basic um, no desk truck that we're looking at here. As you can see, we have a awning on there. That's one of our uh, newer uh, complements. It's so um, when they're doing sampling and, um, that we don't get any contaminants in the um, um, samples because we have dedicated sample sites right inside of our um, uh, control center. The other thing is it keeps the, uh, the operators cooler and out of the rain uh, during inclement weather. So that, that's a big thing. Um, here's a, a quick picture of our trailer unit. The trailer unit um, is desired by some of our customers because you can unhook that, that uh, regular pickup truck, 351 ton pickup truck, and use the truck for other things or take it in and get it serviced and not have to drag um, the unit in there. So um, there is some advantages there, but it does cost a little more. The, uh, this is our Nodiz International truck. This one's stationed in Australia. And so we're flushing down there. We also have one in New Zealand and one being made for UK. And we have a, a lot of uh, other overseas entities that are uh, looking to purchase one at this time. So having shown you the, the basic truck, this truck here that you have on your screen is the truck that um, we've just uh, uh, finished building. It's leaving, I think, tomorrow or Thursday, and it's going to Las Cruces, New Mexico. So this is their truck. So having said that, I just wanna go over a few things here. This is our control center here. You can see my, uh, my hand going around it there. All of the um, different analyzing equipment, flow meters, engine controls, everything is in here. So the opera stands on the curbside and doesn't have to get back into the cab. It makes it very, very convenient. Um, just a quick note on that. We do have some SCADA system that we're developing right now from Samsara to where all of this equipment goes um, into the cloud and the customer can get uh, real-time information back at their office and for record keeping and or uh, supervision. So that's something that we can uh, talk about in person. Um, the, the other thing is um, we have these toolboxes. There's two on this side, one on the other. It keeps all of your um, parts, controls, because this is a turnkey operation. When you get this unit, um, everything comes with it that you would ever need uh, to do your flushing. Um, the second thing is here, we get a little closer so we can see, this is our flow meter here. This controls the, um, and this light here also um, does the uh, chemical feed injection. This is the hail uh, controller that tr runs the engine and a few other things on there. And uh, we'll go over that uh, later. These are the two turbidity meters. These are the flow meters for the turbidity meters, dedicated sample sites, uh, all stainless steel that can be disinfected. And then this is your control head for the turbine meters. This right here and here is the pressure gauges for differential pressure over the tops of your filters so you know when it's done. These are just debubblers to help keep the bubblers out, bubbles out of there. Coming a little closer, we'll pan to the left, get these again. These are um, the control valves go on the hydrants and these are the, the um, uh, 90 degree elbow six inch that help us uh, keep uh, kinks in the hose from uh, reducing our flow. This is a chemical feed pump. It's a prominent, predominant, proeminent. It's a proeminent, and this is a plastic con, uh, container that holds it so if anything leaks out of here, it doesn't get it all over the vehicle or on the, uh, the employees. Um, very low concentrations that it puts out. We've never had a overchlorination event in any of our hundreds of different cities that we've been to. Um, this is a five gallon liquid chlorine tank, double uh, containment. So if there's any leak, it has a second containment that we also take a look at so there's no leaks. Never had a leak there. It's 12 to 13% liquid chlorine. Um, and that's just uh, any chlorine that you would use in your system. So now up here, again, you can see the awning that's up here. This one's taped up ready for transport. I don't see that. So we'll keep going there. This is our inlet here. We'll hook the, uh, um, one of these elbows here up here, and that's how we get it to turn 90 degrees uh, immediately. These are just the control valves that we use, and we have a, a lot of other little controls down here, but they're really not hard to use. This is just a flex coupling right here 
So when the uh, motor is flexing, the, uh, the uh, main water pump is flexing a little bit, it doesn't affect any of this out here. These are our main stainless steel filter vessels. If these are how you take uh, the lid off to change the filters. Eight to 10 minutes is all it takes, um, very quick. The reason why we have two, one is a bypass or one is to be bypassed. So when this one here gets filled up, we can shut this one down on the run, open this one and we can continue filtering if it's really bad. Okay, this is our outlet here. Um, again, we put a 90 degree elbow on there, it comes out. These are just the stairs that go up, they, they retract up. Um, so they, uh, they're not riding out here when you're driving. This is just a simple dolly that we use to transport some of the heavier um, ramps that we have. So um, cars can go over the uh, inflated hose. This right here and also over here is our reels. We put 400 feet of five inch lay flat hose on these. You can see it's capped so no contaminants can get in there. And um, just so you know, um, from uh, this build on, all of our customers are gonna get six inch lay flat hose and these will be slightly bigger, but it's all the same. These are the safeties that hold the reels on there. This is our burrow here. The burrow has a uh, 18 horsepower uh, Honda engine that runs all the hydraulics. This is the steering column for it here. And what it does, it lifts itself and puts itself on here and then it lifts it down. It picks these up and it rolls and hydraulically unrolls the hoses to where you don't have to hurt your back, you know, uh, with all these different uh, sections of hose. So it's all done by this hydraulic mule. As we come around, this is our emergency light up on top. This light on the burrow is on all the time to uh, keep the uh, operator safe. As you can see on the back, we have emergency lights all across the back and we have lights that come over here for other drivers to see this because it does stick out two feet. As you come back around on this side, you can see uh, on the reels, these are the hydraulic hoses that hook up to this just like on a Bobcat. Um, and these are the chains and chain covers that actually run the reels. As we go a little bit farther, you can see the opposite side of the filter vessels, stainless steel filter vessels. They hold about 150 gallons each. These are the jacks. These are the jacks that um, lift and uh, the lids off and allow you to rotate them out so you can take the bags out. Again, this right here is a special two inch ported clay valve that when this line and these tanks receive too much pressure, this is a 200 PSI model. We also have a 270 PSI model, but this is a 200 PSI model. That's the max pressure it can take. This clay valve automatically will open and port and allow you to shut the hydrants down and find out why you've hooked up to too high a pressure of a hydrant. That's all it's for, it's just a safety valve. As we come a little bit farther here, these are our hose ramps, they're kept in here. You take them out, put them on that dolly, take them down the street and set them up if you're gonna have people driving over the hose. Very simplistic. This big um, silver can right here is also the um, compartment where we put all of our spare um, uh, filter bags. And some people put uh, some of their parts and, and, and things like that in, but it's basically for um, new filter bags. This here is um, just an enclosure over the top of the pump and gearbox system, which is right here. So we'll go just a little bit further. As you can see, we have um, yellow. Um, we paint these yellow just for safety and all the lights and everything just for safety. Some of our units as an option, we can put uh, safety lights up here also. Okay, where are we here? Okay, so. So now we're gonna come down and uh, talk a little bit about um, some of the components. This is the Hale gearbox that actually runs the Nodez pump system. The pump would be attached to this one and it would go right here. Oops, I went a little too fast. So I did that. So the transmission comes from right here. The transmission comes from right here and it hooks up to the gearbox, goes straight through, and it goes back to the differential back here. Um, we just pull an air actuated lever and it, it transfers the rotating motion from here up to here and that's what runs the pump. You can't do both at the same time, just this one or this one. 
So in other words, you can't be running the pump while you're going down the street or vice versa. And that's a, another good safety factor. Uh, middle bottom is our um, hydrant and it shows the standard setup. So we have an adapter fitting here. All adapter fittings come no matter uh, what size hydrant port you have. And this is our hydrant control valve. The reason why we do this is because this is a dry barrel hydrant and that's mostly throughout the United States. And when you open that up, you have a drain or we pull at the bottom of the berry and that allows water to come out here and flood the area. So what we do is we close this valve, open the hydrant full open to where that bleed uh, hole shuts. And then we use this valve to open and slowly fill the machine. That's all it's for. You can see the 90 degree elbows here. This is just a blow off here, uh, one inch. Um, everything comes with it. This is the five inch lay flat hose, one of our real old units. It's about 10 years old. So you can see it, it uh, they, have a, they actually have a 10 year warranty on these. So they actually last a long time. Uh, up in the upper right hand corner, um, this is one of our customers out doing some on the spot training uh, uh, in, in one of their uh, corporation yards. That's why they don't have safety equipment and stuff on. But um, this guy doesn't need to be there, but he's actually helping him and showing him how it rolls up on there. We provide two weeks of training or one week of training, depending on what um, your employer wants. And um, we certify for the operation of the NODES and, and certify uh, the operation of this borough here also. The uh, lower left-hand corner is just a shot uh, down in uh, um, El Paso, Texas. Uh, we just wanted to show that we can actually go just about anywhere with this. Um, uh, the El Paso Water Utilities uh, couldn't have us two streets over uh, on their um, Market Street, on their busy downtown area. There just wasn't any parking. So we showed them that we can uh, go two streets over, put it down this alley, hook up, and then we can actually flush all of that without interfering or uh, causing problems with any of their downtown area. So that's one of the benefits that we have is we don't have to be right on the street, we're flushing. We can uh, uh, be offsite and take care of all that from a different location. Center is the, uh, this shows up in Portland, Oregon when we're up there at Portland Water Bureau. This is a blow off here, two inch. that goes back a two and a half inch fire hose, goes to five inch here. And then this hose on the outlet goes all the way back down to the hydrant at the end of the street. So we can achieve up to about 600 gallons per minute to do those smaller mains on the cul-de-sac dead ends. And um, this was a mainstay for them. Now over here on the lower right-hand side, these are the ramps. So you just throw the ramps down here and then you drive over them. Normally you'd have cones out here and somebody guiding them over, but we just wanted to show how easily the, the uh, car or truck can go right over. Okay. This uh, picture on the upper right, uh, right hand corner is another hydrant that only has two, two and a half ports. So we can hook up with all the fittings that we supply on the trucks. We can go to the five inch. So you get that full or close to full flow through the two, two and a half inch hydrants uh, ports and then back to the five inch. And then of course you see the uh, ramps here again. Just a standard setup, doesn't happen very often, um, but it does come with those uh, uh, fittings. The central lower uh, is picture is a picture of well, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico uh, personnel changing filters. As you can see how easy it is to change the filters once you open the top. These down here are um, the old filters that they threw out and they've already dried out. Very simplistic. Um, we don't use this uh, system right here. Now we have the jack system. This is how they open this old one. This is our very first unit and we don't even have it on there anymore. The upper right hand corner is just a, another picture of our control center that shows everything in, this, in the center, the chemical feed unit here and the inlet right here. Now we're gonna come on over to this one here is we have uh, in the lower corner, we have just a representative sample of what the bag looks like so when it comes out and that's what's inside is that nasty dirty iron manganese mix that comes out of probably 98% of of everybody's uh, distribution system. Uh, the bags are a uh, little over $10 a piece and they just go thrown right in the trash. Center uh, upper picture is again um, training um, with our uh, Hillsboro people. The uh, picture on the lower right is just an example of what we can take out of the system. We removed over 10,000 pounds of sand 
uh, from Las Cruces, New Mexico, when one of their wells sand in in a new subdivision and they couldn't get it out. With, they'd already wasted like five million gallons of water trying to get it out. They couldn't get it out. We came in and within, uh, I think it was six hours, we removed all of this. Very heavy. Uh, this isn't normal, but it is one of the capabilities that we can provide. So very important, we have a standard operating procedure guide. So um, all of your uh, staff will receive these and your management and there's uh, some kept on the truck to where everybody has them to reference for uh, emergencies or um, troubleshooting, standard procedures, uh, that, that those types of things. And it is part of the uh, training uh, that we do. So uh, having said that, our customers are conserving water. We need to be seen doing the same. Now put yourself in the customer's shoes. The customers are conserving the water, just like you asked, but they're also watching what you do. What, this is what you don't want the customer to, to see when they're uh, saving the water. So having said that, um, this basically concludes the um, part of the um, NODES, but we want to touch a little bit on our water main, our brand new patented water main jetting method and process. So we're going to go from here and we're going to go into tuberculation. So if you look at this picture on the left, the, the cast iron main that they cut out of there is still in real good condition. It's nice and thick, nice and strong. It's just that it's got all this tuberculation on the inside. This happens all across the states in, in every water system, some uh, more than others, but um, this is um, a, an issue that they have to either come in and try pigging where they dig big pits and they got to um, inconvenience the customers and it costs a lot. They still have to pave all that construction or because it does cost so much, they'll come in and just renew the mains. And that uh, to renew those mains, it comes out to uh, anywhere from 200 to $400 per linear foot. As you can see, um, these are this is like a six inch pipe and it's down to three inch inside diameter. That reduces the fire flow and all of this tuberculation ruins your uh, system residual, especially in the outer most parts of your system. So we have patented a process that we can now come in. This is the standard right here in the middle of your picture. This is our standard NODES unit that we just talked about for all that time. And it's got the two uh, filters on here. Everything's the same, except for we have a launch and recovery system that goes onto the hydrant and we can put a camera system in this side with the flow. Now this camera system that we put in here with the flow is we have a drogue chute on it and we have a three to five feet per second flow that catches that parachute and it pulls it along. Normal camera systems that go in uh, pressurized potable water systems can only go 150 to 200 feet before they bind up. Ours can go over 3,000 feet. So we can take it all the way down, it comes up, goes around the corners because it's going, it's following that drogue chute and it comes up into this um, launch and recovery system. And when it does, we just connect the chute and we hook on, as you can see here, to the jetter head, which is right here. Then as the jetter starts going, we pull the camera back and it pulls the jetter through all the tight corners going through the hydrant, comes down here, turns the corner the right direction and it's watching it the whole time. We can see if we missed a spot, if we need to hit something more, if we need to just keep going because it's not bad or if there's any leaks or anything. Inside the camera head, we have leak detection um, and we also have, um, um, a sonar unit that gives us GIS or uh, sounding and uh, location equipment. So not only are we doing video, but we're uh, also doing GIS or sounding location and or leak detection, audio leak detection. So this camera head is very valuable for all this one-stop shop work that we're doing here, completing it. Having said that, um, these uh, right here on the Jetter trailer is um, they're just stainless steel cans that get rid of, and I'll go back one, they get, when this stuff slowly chips off, the water carries this out, unlike when they're doing, uh, and, and they've tried um, jetting operations in these type of water mains before. Our flow carries it out and gets rid of it to where um, those cans, if you look back on here with those cans, they can be dumped as it's flushing. 
Same with these, we can pull these filters out. Now, the water that's, oops, I did that on accident. So the water that is flowing in the circle here is this water here coming out of our filters is crystal clear so the camera can see everything. And then the water behind the jetter, of course, is muddied up with all the tuberculation. And that basically is our jetting system. As now we want to get into the question and answers. And um, I'm going to have Ohm and Christina um, shoot me the questions, and I'll answer any or all, all uh, questions. And while we're answering these questions, I'm going to leave the slide here on our last slide. It's just a thank you. And what it does, it tells you, uh, you know, we're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And then um, to join us for our next webinar, and it's going to be mostly be about the jetting. And also, if you're attending AWW at H21 in San Diego, I almost said Florida, uh, 13 of June, uh, 2021, please stop by our booth at 3807 and we can give you all the information that you're not going to get out of this or on our website. Let's have some uh, questions now. Okay, Chris, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, at this time, we, we need to get a few que uh, questions on the back end. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to use a Q&A uh, tab and, and type in the questions and we'll field them. Um, here's a question for you, Chris. Um, what are the typical ranges of distribution system mains that you are flushing? Four oh. inch through 12 inch? I imagine flow rates above that are hard to get through a fire hydrant. Very good question. So uh, our, uh, our standard flushing size mains are like uh, Ohm just said, four inch to 12 inch. We can actually um, do uh, three feet per second and those are uh, up to five feet per second with the, uh, you know, everything being, uh, um, new on the truck. But if, if the filters are loaded a little bit, it might be slightly less. On a 14 inch main, we can actually uh, achieve a little better than three feet per second, which is doing the exact same thing, just takes a little bit longer. Now, having said that, that's our standard, um, four to 14 inch, those are standard. But we can also do um, some larger diameter mains if the customer is willing to um, shut the hydrant off at the, in the street pull the hydrant head off, put some adapters on there to where you go directly into five or six inch adapters. And then we can get the, the flows up to uh, 2,500 to 3,000 gallons per minute because we have no uh, port restriction. So we can do larger mains, but it is a special project, it takes a little longer, but we can do it. So the, the, the answer to the question is four to 14 inches and that's what we put in our specs. Next. Next question, would you mind going into a bit more detail on managing GAC? There is a newish problem for us due to the PFAS concerns. Okay, so um, with the PFAS, uh, that is correct. And we have uh, several customers that actually use uh, the Nodez system uh, to do the backwashing of their GAC filter. Uh, granulated activated carbon is what they call that. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yes, um, so, um, your hazardous chemical is gonna be embedded into the fine grains of the granulated activated carbon. So they're stuck in there. The problem with your backwash is when you flush that water out, it goes out into the environment and now you have hazardous material going you know, in the gutter, uh, down the drain, out, out into the rivers and oceans and whatever. And, and uh, the uh, regulatory agencies are very, very against that. So what we do is, we set up our unit um, to do the backwash, but we do it in a loop just like you would uh, flushing a main. So it backwashes the unit and any of those granulate granules that have hazardous stuff in them, and they all do, is those are captured by our one micron absolute filter. And then when they're done with the backwash, it, um, they shut it off. We drain the, the water out because there's nothing in the water. And then we take those bags that have the, the filter bags that have the granulars in there, and we can take those to the hazardous waste site and those are disposed of. So before they were backwashing with water and they couldn't do that, so they started putting the water in tanker trucks. That cost big, big bucks. Now we're doing it like out in New Jersey and in some other states to where we backwash with ours. They take that dried out bag and they uh, take it down there. It's, it's, let, it's, it's like 1% the cost very saving them very very uh, large amounts of water i'm sorry money when the uh you know compared with the old way 
Okay. Next. Yeah, we have another question here. One second. On the main flushing that was described, how much of the tuberculation was removed? Most half, all, and also what type of leak detection is used in that system, the new system that we're doing? Okay, let me do the first part and then I'll ask you the second part in a second. So um, with the tuberculation, well, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, I wonder why that didn't work. Uh, okay, with, with the uh, tuberculation, There it is. With the tuberculation, the Nodes flushing system will only remove a small amount of this tuberculation here on the right-hand side. It only removes a little bit. This is hard tuberculation scale that won't come off with any type of flushing. Ice pigging, air scouring, a little bit does. We've, we've noticed we've removed maybe, you know, three to five percent of it, very little. Uh, it's, it's very hard to remove that. The jetting will remove it all, but the flushing only removes what the jetting removes. So with, with water main flushing, you're removing biofilm, iron manganese, uh, par particulates, things like that. With the jetting um, hooked up with the nodes flushing is how you remove this ugly tuberculation. I hope that answers it. So in other words, no amount of flushing is gonna remove this. You have to have jetting to, to remove this. So the flushing is only for systems that don't have this. And what was the second part of the question? What type of leak detection equipment are you using? So it's a, it's a, a it's a, oh, my mind just went blank. It's a ultrasound or, or it's a, it's a sound. So it, it, it takes the uh, sound and it's listening um, uh, for the leaks. It's uh, highly sensitive. And I know the, the next question will be, well, if it's highly sensitive, how's it gonna hear anything with the jetter head, you know, a foot in front of it, um, tearing up all this tuberculation? You use it on the way to the, um, the jetter head and on the way back after you've dropped off the jetter head when you're done. So, um, or by just by itself when no jetting at all. So it, it's, a, it's, a, um, and there's a, it's an audio um, activated type of listening device that can find and pinpoint the um, the uh, leaks. And what, what's that name, uh, Olm? Can you remember that name? What's that? Uh, on the uh, audio, what's it called? Uh, oh yeah, the different harmonics and- Yeah, like okay. okay, another question. Next question here is, are there any specific operations manuals for each application, such as reservoir cleaning, new main disinfection, and well development? That's correct. Um, there is, and um, normally I would have a picture of our manual, but in the back of our manual has all the additional um, procedures that you can perform once you own the machine, and it does. It has, um, you know, um, disinfection, uh, superchlorination. Um, it has um, how to backwash, GAC backwashing, um, on and on and on. So it, it does have all that in there, and we teach that. Okay, what is the cost of maintenance on the trucks and how often do you have to maintain them? Okay, um, so with the filter system, and I'll go back to the, the truck in here. Okay, so with the filter systems, they're all stainless steel and the only moving part is right here. You keep it greased once a year and you'll never have a problem. They can last for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, it's all real thick, heavy stainless steel. Um, the valves, um, they have gearboxes in here that you got to keep lubricated. You have to keep them, uh, um, and, and, and you have to be uh, gentle with them. They're butterfly valves. They can be broken. There's really not a whole lot of maintenance there, except for maybe some adjustment, maybe once two, every two, three years, something like that. Um, inside the control center is, it should pop open here a second. There it is. So inside the control center here is these uh, turbidity meters have to be calibrated. We do offer a maintenance package and service package that we will come out once a quarter and calibrate these, adjust it, do any maintenance needed, cleaning, that type of thing. Um, the flow meter uh, has absolutely no maintenance to it at all. Um, it, it's all enclosed and sealed. Um, all of this here can be adjusted. Um, there's really no maintenance uh, except for any cleaning inside here. Um, some of the hoses might have to be replaced. Uh, very little maintenance there. 
Um, coming over here to this uh, chemical feed pump, uh, no maintenance all to any of this stuff here. They should last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. With the chemical feed pump here, um, we've had them last anywhere from uh, three years to 10 years. So it all depends on how your operators take care of them and how often they're used. With the um, uh, tank here, it should last 40, 50 years if you, you know, just don't knock it off of there in a wreck or something. Um, coming back um, down here to the, this is the actual sending unit for the mag meter. There's uh, nothing to do with that. Um, the, the reels. And that's very important with the reels. Um, on the reels, the chains have to be tightened weekly. Um, if they're loose, I mean, you know, they, if they're still tight, you don't have to do it. On the, uh, and, and lubricated, so we put a chain lube on there. Uh, on the uh, burrow itself is you have to service the engine every 250 hours. And we've had, um, this is a special hydraulic fluid for environmental safe conditions. We've never had to replace that in 12 years now. So um, that might be maybe every 20 years you'd have to replace that. Now we have uh, replaced one engine on 35 units uh, and it's because the operator destroyed it. Um, having said that, um, uh, we have had a couple electrical fittings and things like that um, that we've replaced, but usually not very often. And coming around this side, uh, coming over here, these sliders uh, get tore up maybe every two, three years. You can buy uh, new sliders. And coming down here is the hoses. Like I said before, they have a 10 year warranty, but that's only on defects. Um, uh, if you um, drag them, uh, run over them with a, uh, a steamroller or something and destroy them, uh, well, then you just got to replace them. And then um, any of this stuff here is easy to repair. You've got to take care of that. The big thing is the, the freight liner itself. You've got to take it in and get all the normal um, servicing and things like that. But I will say that because it only goes out to the job site and back uh, during the week is, I think Hillsborough's got under, still under 10,000 miles after 11 years on there. So you don't put a lot of miles on the truck. So they've got uh, 11, they got 11 years on theirs. It's still running great. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm guesstimating you go 20, 30 years with these trucks easily. Um, you know, I think that covers just about all the maintenance. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, a few more questions here. Um, have there been have there any have there been case studies completed on the water and cost savings use with the Nodes equipment? Uh, yes, there has. Um, um, not official case studies. Um, basically, just uh, t white paper paper type uh, writings from a few of our customers, and we can uh, get those to you uh, at request. Uh, um, but we haven't had uh, like a large um, engineering firm or anything do a, a big case study yet, but I, I think that's in the near future. So uh, having said that, I just wanted to, uh, I can't see, but I think you can see this. This is our uh, SOP and you can see it's full of all types of pictures and write-ups and all kinds of information in there. Um, I think uh, right now it's in 50 something uh, full color pages. So that, that's it. I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. Thank you. Again? Um, next question is about some funding, unique funding. What type of different funding is available possibly to help pay for this vehicle? Um, good question. Uh, we have had um, the original Water Quality Control Board out of California has paid for either all or part of uh, three units that I know of. Um, um, also, and, and we can give you the contact information of the people that we dealt with or the people that the uh, customer dealt with in applying for these grants or loans. Uh, out, still out in California, Metropolitan Water Com uh, Company that is a supplier wholesaler um, has actually offered, I think, $124,000 um, grants to people in their area to um, purchase off the price of the uh, unit to purchase. Um, and I also have um, that contact information, uh, if you'd like. Um, the other thing is, in every state, um, every state has a 
water fund from the federal government and they all have grant applications that you can apply for. So depending on who it is um, that asks the question, if you just get a hold of your state representative through the uh, regulatory agency in the state, um, they can give you the contact for uh, filling out a grant fund from the water fund. Okay, Chris, I'm gonna do one or two more questions so we can stay on time here. Um, another question was in, in regards to that new system. Um, I was thinking about the new system that you were showing at the end that cleans mains. I was wondering if it removes all the tuberculation in the pipe. Uh, talking about the new jetting system that you're talking about at the end of the presentation. That's correct. Okay, so um, yes, and we're limited now to 12 to 14 inch pipes. Um, and we're just in the testing and evaluation phase right now. But yes, um, we can um, uh, remove all of it. What we, what we uh, uh, try to do is get down to about 95 to 98% to where there's just a little tiny um, amount on there because we don't want to go all the way down to bare metal. So we, we attempt to take it down to about 95%. And the reason is we don't want that to accelerate the rust of this old cast iron when we do that. The other thing is if we're in a main that has very um, thin, paper thin uh, mains, you know, from from where, whatever, during the years, we don't want to uh, cause a, a water leak also. So yes, we can, if the customer says, uh, take it all off all the way down, uh, especially if they were gonna do some lining uh, right afterwards, we can take it all the way down. Awesome. Well, hey, that was the last questions and please feel free, anyone on the call to uh, reach out to us if there's any other questions. Uh, we're, it's almost about the hour that we allotted for the show, uh, the presentation. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending the webinar. Um, there will be an email sent out tomorrow in regards to the, the, um, the webinar. So if you guys can answer a survey on what uh, you liked or disliked about it, it'd help our team out quite a bit. And then as Chris said, we do have another webinar coming up November 10th. So please keep your eyes uh, in, uh, out for that. And, uh, we really appreciate everyone attending today's seminar and uh, we hope you guys stay, uh, have be well and stay safe out there. And, and Chris, you have any closing comments? Yes, uh, any, any questions, anytime, you can call me here at the office, uh, call me on my cell phone. Um, it's, uh, everything's on www.nodes.com, that's N-O-D-E-S. And uh, we will post a video. Uh, this video that we just went over, uh, is it gonna be on YouTube? It'll be on the website and I believe on YouTube. So you'll be able to access it from both places. So uh, give me a call anytime with any questions. We do have a Q&A section on our website that can answer probably most of these questions. But give me a call if you have any questions and uh, we can get you started down the road to saving water, infrastructure, and water quality. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for attending and have a great day. Bye-bye.